Okay. I hope this one comes out stereo. The last one I did with my Randy uh, Les Paul. My Randy Les Paul. Isn't that a Randy Les Paul? Um, the, the mic just decided not to be stereo that day. <laughs> and yet, I get 75 views. Really? The playing sucked. And it was in mono, or really just the left channel, I think. And I get 75 views. Why? Why? Tell me the secret. It can't just because be because Jeff called, or Brent, or whatever the hell his name is. I always get it mixed up. That's why I call him dude. Dude! What are you, Brent Jeff or Jeff Brent? I go, you gotta have a last name. I ain't telling nobody my last name. So he told me. And it's confidential, but he just, you know, I get it. I get it now. I wish I'd have never put my full name on the internet, but too late. Actually, I tried to take it down and it put it back up. I was just going to take my initial middle name out and then it wouldn't let me. This is Google, which, you know, Google, Facebook, YouTube, you're... Pfft. So... song and it came into my head I'm like hey that sounds pretty cool I should try to work on this let me play it again <laughs> these songs. Well, I know how I remember them because I saw them played every weekend for two years. So they're drilled into my brain. So I will give you a copy of the Randy Rhodes thing. This bootleg is blown up now because I thought I'd put it on a Randy Rhodes site that could be trusted and they, that, red, that site could be. But other sites got a hold of it that I'm not too keen on. See, the whole thing with Randy Rhodes is... I knew him, so the big deal about him is weird to me. Because it's like, dude, he's just another guy. And he's really nice, and people making such a big thing over him, he would be really embarrassed, actually, kind of. Not embarrassed, but he, he was shy, but he really he did like being famous. He did. He, he, he dug it. He just was just learning how to deal with the fame when... So, <clears throat> it's not like I was good friends, anything. I was like best friends with a guy and we hung out all the time. No. I talked with him, what, 20, 30 times on the street, running into him mainly at 7-Eleven down the street. And, uh then taking lessons from him just because my friend was getting so better so much better on guitar than I was that I'm like it's got to be the guy giving him lessons 
that Randy Rhodes dude. And I didn't get it because the I had the Quiet Riot album. That was not good. I don't care what anybody says. You can like Quiet Riot all all you want. The first two that they put out weren't good. Randy didn't even like them. So you know, whatever. And the highlight of the whole Quiet Riot show was Randy's solo. And I remember when I was, I think I was like 12 or 13. I must have been 13 or 14. I don't know. I can't remember. I'll have to ask my, uh, no, I can't ask my uncle that took me because he's not here. My uncle took me. I mean, he's, and, uh, cause I wanted to go and no one wanted to go down to Holly weird as my parents always said. So he took me in, we saw Quiet Riot, he took me to see Van Halen, and I know I was really young then, but he snuck me in, and that was at Gazzari's. And, uh, so I got these, you know, one-offs, and even Van Halen, it was just so loud that I was like, but when the album came out, I'm like, holy crap, listen to that, that ain't Ace Freely. <laughs> so, anyways, getting back to Randy, so I've got my Randy... Stuff, Randy Road stuff, you know, that got tapes, because everybody usually taped their lessons. They'd tape what he would play, and then take it home, along with the thing he'd write out, the uh, the tab, and you'd learn it. And then the next week, you better know it. <laughs> you know, because he did not like people wasting money. Like the time I came in, I came in stoned once, and he lectured me for 20 minutes. And then he's like, I just, I just killed your buzz or something like that. And I'm like, yeah. And we just, both just started laughing. He goes, well, the thing is, is you're wasting your parents' money. I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm paying for this myself. I, had, I have to pay for your lessons because you're more expensive than the guy over at Larry Larson, Joe, who I was taking lessons from. And his, he was like five or six bucks a shot, and Randy was a little more. And you got to remember, this was the late 70s. So, things are different. I know I'm old, I'm old. But... That was funny, you know, that, you know, I just, but those are like my stories, they're my, and that's the one I just remember, but usually it's when I talk to people, I'm like, oh, well, that's right, but it wasn't a long time, I didn't take lessons from him for a long time, I took him for a few months until he left, and then I took him a few lessons when he came back, he was giving him for like, I think they were 28 bucks a shot, a lesson, and no one is like, no, he didn't do it. Joe Holmes mentions it in an interview, so I knew I wasn't crazy. I knew he was giving lessons, but uh, whatever. And then I took him, but, you know, everybody claims to know him. I'm going to, there's several people out there that just do, they've never met him they like him, but they lie about knowing him or have ever met him. And they're like, oh, yeah, I, I know that you 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 knew him because uh, this other person backed you up. Well, that person never knew him. And all the stuff he says is a bunch of crap or whoever. She's anything. I'm just done. So I just want... So to me, he always made me happy. Him and, you know, Eddie Van Halen, when I, I met them when they were rehearsing down the street, they were very cool. And very cool. So, I don't know. The Randy Rhodes thing, I, I put the stuff out there, I, and there's a guy, you know, a friend of mine, he's like, dude, you should be making money off this. You should be dealing, wheeling, and dealing, try to get stuff that you don't... I go, I've got everything. He goes, you can't have everything. I'm like, whatever. And I brought out just one box of my bootlegs, and he flipped his lid. He's like, oh, I need this and this and this and this and this and this. And he was going to take them home. I'm like, 
Eh. I'll make you copies. Maybe. Maybe. I don't want money. I want people to be happy. I want them to get joy out of these things. <laughs> song and then I'm done D come on tell me huh what okay how about Thank <laughs> you. 
That's drunk and disorderly. And then it goes back into the... <laughs> That's one of my songs. That'll be the second song on the recorded album. That will happen this year. I just got to get back in touch with that drummer and, and get it done. So, uh, yeah, there you go. So, uh, yeah, that, that friggin' Randy Rhodes bootleg, the Kalamazoo, Michigan thing that's that I put out on YouTube, it's picking up steam again. We're getting close to, like, I think we're at 6,000 views, which really isn't a lot. And and when I, this is what I didn't want to do. This is why I didn't give it to anybody on one of those fan sites. Because I know who controls most of those sites. Like there's Randy Rose Remembered. That's supposedly the family. There's the Randy Rose Society. There's Eternal Randy Rose, which that's the one I chose to give it to after having it out for months i just thought you know i'm just gonna maybe they haven't seen it and apparently they hadn't but as soon as i put it on their site it <clears throat> i get people from all the sites asking me dude can i have a hard copy of this and you know where did you get it and what's the deal and i think i tell the story and now i got it and everything so whatever I'm happy to give it to whoever wants it. I just, you know, pay for the shipping. I'm not just going to do things for free. I mean, I'm doing it for free. It's I'm not getting any money. Just pay for the shipping and the CD and all that crap. And I got to go buy cases. Because I don't have any.
so there you go. Motley Crew anymore. I'm selling all my Motley Crew stuff, so if you're interested in, in it, tell me. I'm only keeping the mixed stuff. Nikki, Tommy, especially, I'm getting ready all that. I just... I'm done. Randy's stuff I'm keeping, but I will put out everything that I find. I've got three more live shows that are coming. I'll be putting out. The lessons, when I find them, I'll put them out. And... An interview that I have, a tape that he did backstage, and you can hear Def Leppard opening the show. So, and it's Diary Tour. So there you go. It's all coming out. <laughs> Actually, the the interview might be in '81. I can't remember. I've got to I got to find it. See, the whole thing, the great thing about this tape being found, I didn't find it. It's in the room that I grew up in where I'm no longer at. And my parents are cleaning out their house. Getting ready to move, I hope. And uh, so she finds stuff. You know, pictures of my son, pictures of whatever, tapes, stuff, pictures, tickets. And she's like, do you want this? Do you want that? Yes, 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 yes. So that's how I'm finding this stuff. I also found, I got the Wasp demos. I got a London demo with Nikki on it. It's crap. I don't like London, never have. But I was in it for three days when Fred Corey was drumming. Three days. So that's that. Okay? Okay. That's it. <laughs> Mm. 
Metal. Subscribe and comment. Metal.